Hello and welcome to Two Car Pros. Today we're doing something a little bit different, a little weird, a little out of the norm for what I usually do in these videos. Normally these are how to's, you know, how to fix your car, how to do certain things on certain vehicles. But I thought today maybe we could shake it up and do a toolbox tour. I'm kind of right in the middle of a big transition phase in my life, uh, both personally and professionally. And I bought a new toolbox, uh, new to me, it was pre-owned. Um, because new, these toolboxes are like seven grand and I picked this up for much, 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 much less than that. Um, this is my pride and joy. I love my tools. I've spent a lot of money on them. I've spent a lot of my life just collecting them from a young age. Uh, I love working on cars, I love tools. So I kind of wanted to share that with you all. Um, other than that, I do say um and like a lot. I apologize already for that. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. So on top of my toolbox is this nice mat. It's cut perfectly for the stainless steel top and the stainless steel top is sold uh, separately, but I think it's totally worth it for this snap-on box. I forget his exact designation, but I'm sure I've shown it on screen already. Uh, I really like the stainless steel top and I keep it nice, but I will admit that like if you're taking apart something complex, uh, the screws will just kind of wander off. So it's nice to have this, this nice mat. I think Dynamat makes it maybe? I don't know, but I do like it. Another thing I keep on here is my flashlight. Always nice to have a really bright LED flashlight. Uh, I've owned this flashlight for a few years and I still have not changed the batteries in it because that's just how efficient LEDs are. So nice to have. Um, this is probably my most important tool that I own is uh, this laptop over here uh, running all data. That's a super helpful diagnostic tool. It also connects to a module that you will see later. I'm gonna be doing a whole video on that coming pretty soon, as soon as I get a couple, they get a couple more updates out to me um, and I can show off a little bit more, then we can you know, uh, go into that detail a little bit better. So if I don't really understand how something goes together or I need a diagram or a wiring diagram, that is a great resource. If you don't know what that is, check out all data. Uh, you don't necessarily have to install anything. They have an online service as well. So let's move on to the first drawer. So obviously over here are my sockets. I don't have everything filled out. So this is half inch metric, three eighths metric, and then one quarter drive metric. When I'm referring to those sizes, I mean drive in case you didn't know, and that's okay. And this is 3 8 American. I don't use any half inch um, American. American's kind of rare in automotive. It is out there, but um, it's much more common for metric. Um, so that's why I have a really complete nice metric set. All these are medium deep wells. So they're super nice. They're medium deep well impacts because you can use an impact uh, in a non-impact situation, but you can't use a non-impact in an impact situation. See what I mean? So, and I like these medium deep wells. They seem to be a happy medium for everything. And then I have short ones, obviously. And then I have uh, some deep wells, but those are half inch, as those are typically for a little bit uh, more robust applications. You'll also notice that I'm missing my 23 for metric. Um, that's intentional. There's really not that much 23 out there. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen it on stuff that's not um, custom. So I don't really need it. Didn't really feel like spending the money. Uh, these are some awesome 3 8 extensions. You need those. These are Torx. If you're going to work on uh, norm, if you're going to work on modern cars, you are going to need Torx bits. There is no way around it. And having Allens that you can mount on a uh, ratchet is super, super helpful. These are spark plug sockets. These have the wigglies, wiggly. And uh, these are inverted Torx. So this is the opposite of Torx. So it has uh, 12 points in there, I believe. Or no, it can't be 12. It's a six point. It's a six point star socket. So it's an inverted Torx. So it fits on normal Torx like this. So sometimes you have bolts like on a power steering rack. Sometimes they'll have a bolt hanging down that looks like this. And then you need an inverted Torx to get it off. So you need both sides of the Torx equation. It's fun, it's fun how they did that, right? That's so you'll give up and take it to the dealer. But we're better than that. I guess then we can go move on to this. 
Uh, this is a little cheapo Bosch hand drill. Uh, it's a 12 volt lithium ion. It's nothing too crazy. I don't know the breakaway torque specs and all that. I don't ask, I don't know. It's literally for undoing insanely easy things. I've used it from time to time. And I also have the adapters for it. Um, I use this one a lot. So this can go into here and then you can use three eighths or a quarter uh, on the electric drive. If you're doing something really easy, it works really well for like trim pieces and stuff. This is a little bit more serious. This is my three eighths pneumatic impact gun from Snap-on. Uh, it's a limited edition, 2809 out of 9500, yeah. Um, MG325, if you're wondering. Those are my initials, so if anybody steals it, I'll know. Because they're expensive. You know, this is basically my life savings I'm showing you. Um, this is actually an interesting impact gun. I have the other one, the one that came previously to this, and it has like a really fine adjuster. You can really tune in what you're doing. Uh, this one doesn't have that. It only has uh, three settings, I believe, low, medium, and high. And all the, you know, adjustment comes out of your throttle position. It has a very um, variable throttle on the trigger. So it took me a little bit to figure that out because it's a little bit uh, different to what I'm used to. And even on the top, 95th anniversary of Snap-on. I'm a big Snap-on fan. But it is expensive, but it's good. So if it's your... Can I have that like this? Yeah. If it's your career... You're going to want, you know, stuff that's not going to let you down. And uh, I happen to really enjoy Snap-on. And a couple of things I inherited um, just from my father and grandfather. So not everything I have I actually bought. But I did buy this. Uh, this is not Snap-on. This is Ingersoll Rand half-inch impact. And this thing rocks. It is so quiet. It's quieter than my 3.8 gun. It's incredible. Like, normally they're, they're a deeper sound, but it's overall quieter. And, like, the thing on the box was, oh, my God, it's so quiet. And I'm like, yeah, sure. And this has four settings. I only leave it on the maximum one because, let's face it, if I'm breaking this out, I need some massive torque right now. And over here are, I'm not going to show you all of them. I'm just going to show you the one. There's some assorted ratchets and things and extensions. But this is really one, what I wanted to go over. My uh, bent-handled snap-on uh, ratchet. I think it's 85 tooth. I'm not sure, uh, but it is serviceable, so that's neat. And this is my go-to ratchet. No matter what I'm doing, I just use this. This is the answer. Uh, and I know a lot of people don't like it because it has a wiggly head, you know, adjustable head, whatever you want to call it, but I actually prefer that. You'd think that once you put torque on it, it would just wiggle out on you and, you know, it'd be a problem, but it really doesn't. It stays pretty stationary. So um, if I was going to recommend any, like, everyday ratchet, a go to 3 8 ratchet, this would be the one. I love this ratchet, it's amazing. This in this uh, wooden box here are single flute countersinks. So if you were to drill a hole, this could bevel the edge for you very easily. I don't use them a ton because I don't do a lot of drilling, but um, they're neat to have. Gotta have measuring tapes. I got a ton of those because you lose them. They're just like uh, guitar picks. You put them down and they're gone. This is a long uh, thermometer probe. So you could put this uh, pretty much anywhere and get an idea of how hot it is. But uh, I've used it for hydro dipping because the hydro dipping vat needs to be a certain temperature. This is nice for that. Um, it's not really essential. You don't need one of those. This, however, you absolutely need. You don't need a snap-on one like this one. This is a snap-on CT4F. Uh, made in the USA. This is a snap-on test light with a nice long uh, cable. If you're doing any kind of automotive work, you're going to want one of these to see what is getting power. I can't recommend a test light enough. You don't need a snap-on one. Um, that's just the brand I prefer. These are just jumpers. You know, see those. This is pretty cool. This is an extendo grabby hook or claw. So let's say you drop something down an engine bay like everybody does uh, you could just reach in there with this and it'll grab it see how handy that is it has a light on the end of it too end of it too but it's always been a very weak light see these are super cool this one's made by general i believe it says general on the handle so i'm gonna go with that made by general uh if you don't have one of these maybe invest in one you don't need one with a light that's just silly um I don't remember how I got this, but I've used it countless times. Uh, if you don't want to use a magnet or what you dropped is plastic, this is super handy to have. This is a power steering pulley installer. 
So you put this end into the shaft of the power steering pump with the pulley on and this screws in and as you ratchet this end while holding this, this presses the pulley onto the shaft. So that's the way this works. And I have a nice one because I do it a lot. You don't usually need a nice one, but it's a solid investment if you're ever gonna work on your own car or do any kind of um, pulley work. This is a little stand to help you solder because you need three hands to solder really. Um, so you put the solder in here or the wires in here like this and it kind of holds in place. I've used it before on the show. Uh, they're super handy to have. This, I have no idea what this is for. I got this out of a um, car I had gotten second hand. No clue what it does. It just has numbers on it. I've used it in the past for thumbnails if I need to show like, oh, 61 ways to unclog something or something, who knows. Uh, I, I like having it. I'm not getting rid of it. I like it. Here's another test light. You can't have enough of these. Uh, this is a non-snap-on brand I bought a really long time ago, like when I was 14. Um, this one's pretty good. It's really cheap. It's on Amazon. I think it's like $12. Okay, moving over to the kind of messy side of my toolbox that I haven't cleaned in forever. These are a crow's foot, uh, crow's foot wrench, I believe is exact designation. Um, so you're able to put this into a like, tight fit place and kind of, you know, put a square in there and tighten if you need to. I haven't used them that much, but they're handy to have when you need them. This is a multimeter. So this is able to uh, detect voltage. I use it for batteries. I use it for alternators. I use it to see if a fuse is getting power sometimes or how much power it's getting. These are super handy to have. If you don't have a multimeter, I advise buying one. You don't need one made by Fluke though. There's a bunch of them made on, uh, on Amazon for not that much money. Uh, I would go that route. I don't even think I bought that, but yeah, I'm pretty sure that was a gift. This is a Mini 12 Peiko combination set from Snap-on. And you can see, it's just a bunch of different interesting little tools and hooks and pokers and prodders and torques. Well, I guess that was a Torx, but, oh, screwdrivers. I use this more often than anything else. You just kind of use this to poke around things. They're super handy to have, a nice 90. Not super vital for the person that's working on their car casually. It's not, that, that's not super, super vital. This is for cutting brake lines. So if you're making custom brake lines, you put the line in it, you screw this in, you go around it a few times, it cuts the line. That's what it does. This is the same thing. This is kind of cool. This is an old school uh, plum tool screw extractor. Uh, I got this from my grandfather. It was made in LA in the United States. And uh, these are just old school screw extractors. I'm super happy to have them. I really like them, so keep them around. I don't, I, I've never used them, but I like them. These are one, two, three blocks. I have a bunch of these. Uh, they're super handy for holding things down. And of course, a one, two, three block is one thick, two this way, and three this way. So that's why it's called one, two, three, one, two, three block. Some people call them engineering blocks. I'm sure there's a professional thing to call them, but that's what I call them, all right? These are insanely cool. These three things are all the same thing in varying sizes. These are punch knockouts. And what this does is you take it apart. Well, let's say you need a hole this big in sheet metal, but you can't drill it because it'll just uh, taco out. It'll just fold over and be terrible. So what you do is you drill a hole that size, the size of this thread here, and then put this on the other side and keep screwing and screwing and screwing like this, screwing this part in, and it'll eventually punch that hole out of the sheet metal. It's incredibly handy, they're amazing. These I recommend getting, I like them a lot. They might be expensive though, I don't remember what, how much I bought these for, but all three of them do the same thing, just varying sizes. These are tire pressure gauges. You absolutely need these. You should buy them immediately if you don't have them. They range in prices and quality. I think I bought each of these for $10. This is a disc lock, has nothing to do with automotive. This is a battery terminal cleaner and battery end cable cleaner. You need one of these, so buy one. More tape measures. 
This is an automotive scanner. If you plan on working on your car in any facet, you're gonna need some version of this. Uh, this is a little bit more high-end one made by Launch, a 6011. Uh, this can do airbags and ABS codes. Maybe you don't need that, but I do, so that's why I have it. Super handy to have. Now this is the other side of that all data program I was talking about earlier on my laptop. This connects to the vehicle uh, using the OBD2 port. And then this sends out a Bluetooth signal to my laptop and I'm able to diagnose um, different systems on the car. Super, super cool, I love this. Uh, I don't know if it's available to consumers just yet, but I have it right now. Um, as soon as it is, I wanna do a huge video thing on it though, but this is super cool. You will be able to get this at some point in the future. These are cobalt drill bits made by Craftsman. I have not used them yet. I got them a little while ago. They're uh, spin, compact, spin point contact drills. Uh, they're supposed to stay on point. Again, I haven't used them just yet. They look promising though. Uh, and I don't do a ton of drilling when I do. Uh, the biggest hole I've ever needed is 3 8 so that's not too crazy. So, And we're talking about drilling holes, not punching out holes in sheet metal, so it's a little bit different. Uh, duct tape, can't have enough of that. I like this Iron Force stuff. It's a little bit over the top, but the thing I like about it, and I'll show you right now, and why I spend a little bit more and I get this, it rips perfectly straight pretty much every time. And the reason it does that is because it's perforated. See? So if it's perforated, uh, it's much easier to rip off a nice uh, straight slice and you're not sitting there trying to, you know, tear off a nice piece. These are gloves. Uh, these are not the gloves I usually like using. These are only three millimeters. Um, I usually like four or five, but they work. These just split a lot more than I'm used to. And I know a lot of people make fun of me for wearing gloves, but there's two main reasons I wear gloves. One reason is, uh, automotive has a lot of icky things in it that get into your skin. Your skin's porous. And I don't want those things in my body. Chief among which is like battery acid or maybe uh, oil contaminants, all kinds of gross things. The second reason is it's an extra layer of skin because working on your car, there's a sharp stuff all over the place. And when you're working on a car casually, probably not that big a deal, but when you do it for a professional like I do, Gloves are nice to have. Oh, and number three, I don't like eating sandwiches with uh, oil on my hands. I don't care what that makes you think of me, but I like having oil on these, taking these off, washing my hands, and I can eat food. I like that. And over here, are just assorted creams and such. And by creams, I mean anises and dielectric grease. This is more anises, because on my truck, I believe you need aluminum not nickel, and then on other cars you need nickel and not aluminum, and then this is just um, thread sealant. And that, this is just a teeny bit of really terrible solder. Works though, it's good enough. Okay, the second drawer down. Um, we're kind of in more of hand tools. This is the way I've kind of organized things here. Uh, there's two pipe wrenches. You don't really use those in automotive, I just have them. Here are some shears for more metalworking. This is a brass hammer. Uh, this is something you might want to purchase or thinking about purchase because brass is obviously softer than a lot of other metals. So if you're hammering with this, um, it typically won't damage the metals you're hammering with. You can even see a bit of uh, pitting in the top here. Uh, this one's snap-on. It is probably older than I am, and it is cracked down the middle there. So I must have inherited this one, which I'm okay with. Uh, more shears. This I just recently purchased. Uh, it's a typical snap-on hammer. Do I have an exact number? Yes. This is a snap-on HBBD32 32-ounce hammer. You are absolutely gonna need a good hammer to work on cars because stuff gets stuck all the time, especially uh, brake components. You're gonna want a good hammer, and I really like these hammers um, because there's no way the head can fly off and hit something you don't want. So that's why I like these. 
Down here is my hacksaw. This one is made by Mac. Uh, it is quite old, but I love it. It works amazingly well. The construction is very simple and it's very durable. I use um, Starrett blades because they're decent quality. I've been using these forever. They're pretty good. And then this is an, another thing you're gonna want if you're ever working on your car for any period of time is a large set of channel locks so you can squish brakes back into their housing or um, get oil. This is really great for getting oil filters off because this opens up really wide and you can grab it and just kind of wiggle it loose a little bit because you can kind of do this and then get the rest by hand. These are super cool to have. I totally recommend them. I don't know what brand they are. They just say channel lock on them. So maybe they're the channel lock brand. I don't know. This is a rubber mallet. You're going to want one of these. Maybe a little bit beefier than this one. This is a very... Uh, small rubber mallet, but it was free, so I'm not gonna turn it down. This is a Blue Point ball peen hammer, 20 ounces. Uh, it's pretty old, one of the earlier, earlier tools I've ever bought. Uh, it's been with me for a long time, and I enjoy it. I don't know its exact model number, I'm sorry. And then this hammer I got from the guy I actually bought this toolbox from because I bought this toolbox secondhand. I did not buy this toolbox new because new I think it's like seven grand or some insane amount. But used you can get a snap-on box for not bad and I love every second. This I got as a gift. Um, this is just a typical DeWalt hammer. Uh, this is really more of a framing hammer I think. And I use it for automotive stuff though. I mean why not, right? But again, you, you're getting the same I think it might be a 20 ounce hammer. You're getting the same theme I liked earlier where this is all one piece so the head can't fly off. I like that. All right, the next thing I have to show you guys is super cool. This is an automatic wire stripper and if you don't have one of these, you should buy one. You can get them for fairly inexpensive. Mine's made by Paladin Tools. So you put wire in there, you pull the trigger like this or squeeze the handle and it automatically strips your wire perfectly every time and you're not sitting there fumbling around. Heavier duty metal shears, always nice to have. Um, these are really nice. These are made in the USA and they are absolutely sharp. Don't play with those. These are great and they're made by a company that a lot of people uh, flame over of how to pronounce the company's name. It's spelled K-N-I-P-E-X. -I, uh, I say Nipix. Some people say Nipex, some people say Knipex. I just say Nipex. I'm gonna go with Nipex. They're made in Germany. I believe they have a lifetime warranty and these are my favorite ones. They really get down deep where you wanna go um, and hold on to things and they come to a nice point. Uh, I believe these are called a 2871280. Uh, get a pair of these, they're great. And they're not super, super expensive either. They're worth every penny. These are a typical wire stripper made by Miller. I think it's Miller Electronics. Um, I like these, they're a little bit more old school. You can kind of feel when you're stripping the wire a little bit easier. Uh, these are really cool as well if you can't use something like this. This is pretty cool. Not a lot of people know what this is. This is a piston ring plier. So you have piston rings, you can install them. You know, piston rings kind of like this. So this goes in there and spreads them. You can put them on or it goes in and spreads them and you can take them off. This is an absolutely essential tool you need if you're gonna be taking apart engines. If you're not, ignore it. Uh, this is a tr kind of a cr tr crummy pair of uh, needle nose. But this again is uh, Nipix. Amazing, super great. Buy a pair of these, they're great. This is a battery terminal puller. So if your terminal is stuck on your battery, you're able to pull it off using these. They're pretty cool. Uh, I haven't used a ton of them, but yeah, works. That's an adjustable wrench. Probably don't need to show you that. Uh, more wire strippers. These are great though. These are made by Snap-on. They're a 388CF uh, and they're just uh, a pair of die cutters. And these are wonderful. They are absolutely sharp and they work amazing in every situation. I absolutely love these. More Nipix stuff. These are mini channel locks made by Nipix Cobra 8701-150s. Uh, they're made of Vandium. They only open this much, but you know what? When you're working on something very small, it makes sense to have a little bit smaller tools. And then my absolute go-to tool for pretty much everything is my channel locks. These are Cobra, Nipix Cobra 0 or 8701-300s. 
Um, these are amazing. They're incredible because they have their, their channel locked, so they're not just going all over the place. You actually have to push a button to get them to go anywhere. I like that, and they are absolutely incredible. They have a lifetime warranty, made of Vandium. Uh, recently, we had worn down, someone I know had worn down the teeth in them, and uh, they replaced the entire, the entire unit. Instead of just like trying to grind the teeth sharp again, they replaced the entire thing. So the customer service with Nipix is amazing. I can't say enough about this company. I love them. Over on the far right over there are my uh, ring pliers. So if you don't know how snap ring pliers work, you know, snap ring is kind of like this and it has little holes in it. You insert this into the holes and as you squeeze it spreads and you're able to get the snap ring off. These are super cool, I love them. These are just ratcheting wrenches. I don't use these a ton. These are made by Blue Point. Um, I, don't, I just don't use these a ton. I feel like I use my ratchet set way more, but they're handy to have when you're in a foobar situation. They're not completely necessary though, I don't think. Okay, so the third drawer down on the left uh, has this nice writing surface. So if you're sitting in a chair or a stool and you need to write on something, I believe that's why this is here. Um, I've put my laptop on it a few times too. This is super handy, I'm really glad this is here. But if you slide it backward, this is my drawer of many measurings. So it has all kinds of uh, dial calipers and my, there's a micrometer in here. This is made by Mauser. This is a totally cool made in Germany dial caliper. Uh, it's all manuals, so there's no dial. But for rough edge cements, these are good. These are made by Matoyo. These are not my greatest calipers I own. They do work. Um, they go all the way to the thousands place, which is cool, but yeah, they seem to be a little bit un inaccurate when you're trying to zero them out consistently. I'm not a super huge fan of these. Uh, this is my Matoyo micrometer. It's a digital micrometer. No, there's no batteries in it. So that just shows you how often I use a micrometer. Not often. This is my go-to dial caliper. This is one I use all the time for, for pretty much everything because it is digital and that's super handy when you're trying to figure something out. So that's nice. So you can measure my glove. <laughs> and it goes to a pretty far um, place. How far does it go? 100 thousandths? I believe, I believe that's 100 thousandths. I'm sure you'll correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. But these are super cool. Matoyo is a great brand. Love them as well. This is my go-to kit um, dial calipers, why I keep it in its nice case. This, this I do not use, oh, it's almost never, almost never do I use this. This is a dial caliper like I just showed you, it's made by Matoyo, but it has a foot long range. So let's say you need to measure something precisely that's like 10 inches long or a foot long. That's what this is for, and it does an incredible job. I absolutely love this. I'm so happy I have it. I don't use it very often, though. But when you need it, you need it. All right, this next thing I have uh, is was a gift. I have never used it before, but I do have it. I believe it is a bore depth gauge. I could be totally wrong, but I did get it as a gift. I have never used it. It doesn't really have an automotive application. Cool thing to own, though. And here's some more mics, and I love these rulers. These are my favorite rulers, and I'll show you why. A normal ruler doesn't start at zero. It has like a bit of a bevel, like an edge. This doesn't, it just, this is zero, that's one. There's no need to compensate for that. So I like these rulers for that reason. They're the only ones I keep around. Fourth drawer down on the right is really basic. It is just, of uh, two nut driver set that I oh, I never use. I never use these, I, I don't know why I bought them. But yeah, they're there. I probably bought them because it has orange. I like orange. <laughs> this is American, that's metric. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't use these a ton. Maybe I'll relocate more things into this drawer. It looks a little barren. I did just get this box. Here is where I keep the little bit more heavy duty sockets. So these are gonna be like, I believe this one's 36 mil. Yeah, this is 36 millimeter. Um, we have some half inch drive stuff. So this is a half inch drive ratchet made by Pittsburgh. It is absolute 
not very good, but I don't use it a lot, so I'm okay with it. And these are actually snap-on extensions. And the only reason I have snap-on half-inch extension extensions is to get bell housing bolts out because you need a really good extension set to do it. This is the bottom drawer on the left side. We're on the home stretch. So this has a bunch of old school tools that I just can't part with because they're so weird or in some cases extremely helpful. This one is a little weird. I haven't used this in a very long time. This is an oil filter wrench and it looks a little weird, right? But it's counter um, coiled. So like, let's say this is my hand is the oil filter and you wanna take it off. So you get a rent or a socket and you put it on this way. And as you turn it to the left, it grips the oil filter and uh, helps spin it off. I haven't used this thing and I can't remember how long, but it is, it's cool, right? It's like an ancient, not ancient, it's like a little bit of a vintage tool. Um, it does have some application, so I, I can't bring myself to part with it. This is a paint gun, pretty self-explanatory. It's made by Binks. Uh, I believe it was made in Chicago. Uh, it's a pretty old school gun, but it works amazing. Uh, for the couple of applications I've had to use, I would not part with it. So this is great. This is a battery trickle charger. So you could uh, trickle charge throughout the night and uh, you know, charge your car battery. It's pretty self-explanatory. This is a timing light. Don't usually use these too much anymore. It's made by Snap-on. Uh, my dad gave me this quite a while ago. It's pretty cool when you're working on something that actually has a distributor. You can probably want one of these so you can adjust the timing, but um, these are really antiquated for modern cars. You don't really need them. This is incredibly neat. This is incredibly neat. I got this as a gift for my grandfather. Um, this is a stethoscope for hearing different things in the engine bay. So, you know, this looks like what your doctor uses, right? And you put this in your ears, but this is a needle and you can put it on different things to see if you're getting rod knock or if you're getting uh, you know, different sounds from different places. So this is really trick to have. It's a neat tool. Not everybody has it. I don't even know if you can buy them anymore. You probably can. You can probably buy much nicer ones, but um, this one I have, I like it. And everybody's favorite tool, the torque wrench. I don't know why I get so many questions about torque wrenches, but yeah, here's an old school torque wrench that uses the torsion of the metal to determine torque value. Crazy, right? This thing's great. A half inch drive, um, no ratcheting mechanism. You just better have it where you have it. So yeah, this one's made by Herbrand in Fremont, Ohio. So yeah, there you go. This is not my nice modern torque wrench, which you don't get to see today because I left that in a different box. We're only doing this one today. <laughs> if, you like, if you like this series, let me know. Is it boring? Is it interesting? I don't know. You have to tell me. And this is my rivet gun. Probably don't need to see that. It's just a really cheap rivet gun. And this, this is a grease gun, so these can uh, grease Zerk fittings on cars. It's essential. You need one. This you do not need if, unless you have drum brakes. This is a drum brake adjuster tool. So. so the third drawer down on the right, we're on the right side of my toolbox now, is screwdrivers. And two of these packages are brand new. I just got them, I just opened them because I had a set of Craftsman screwdrivers before but they always seem to break and give out on me. So I got a set of snap-ons and a set of blue points. Um, they are insanely nice quality especially the snap-on ones, obviously. I used this one before, it's really nice. So, good screwdrivers are really cool. There's a nice set on Amazon, I think Jegs makes some, um, that are nice too, but uh, I use these snap-on ones. These are really old school. These were a gift, and uh, the funny thing about these snap-on ones is these screwdrivers back in the day, I'm not sure how old these are, but they've got some age on them. Uh, they made them quad-sided, which is kind of hard to grip on, right? You know, it's difficult. So later on, they went to these, which are triple-sided. See, one, two, three, which is really easy to hold. So it's kind of nice that Snap-on is at least listening to us a little bit. And this is more picks and hooks. So you have like a medium set and a bigger set this is the small set 
of hooks. Actually, this is a medium set, the small set I keep up top I showed you earlier. So this is a, a medium hook. These things are nice, but a little unnecessary for somebody who's working on their vehicle casually. Uh, I have them, you probably don't need them. If you're wondering what this is over here, this is a drum kit spring remover or drum brake spring remover. So this is, this is only for really taking apart drum brakes. Otherwise you don't really need it. Now this is why that dr drawer up there was a little packed with those ratcheting wrenches because you can see that my wrench drawer is very, very full. So on the left we have American, we have uh, some ratcheting wrenches that are American. Those are okay. Um, and then we have my set of blue point wrenches I've had since I was like 13. All the American sizes. These I just picked up. They're little stubby, little teeny tiny stubby guys, but they work amazingly well. They're made by Pittsburgh. You get them at Harbor Freight. Um, they're not very nice, but you know, sometimes it works. So on the right side of my toolbox is the metric stuff. And again, you see that I'm missing the 23 millimeter. That's because these wrenches are insanely expensive and I just bought them. Uh, the sets are not so bad, but once you get above 20 millimeter, like I believe, I think this was $90 for a 20 millimeter or 21, no, 20, 20 even millimeter um, wrench. These are not so bad. This goes all the way from 10 to 19. These are for lines, these are line wrenches and they're double-sided. So this side's nine mil, this side's 11 mil. And then this is just the American side of that, which is super cool. Um, I really like my wrench drawer because it's very, very organized. I like that. So if I wanted to, I could put those metric ratcheting wrenches in here or maybe relocate these because you don't need line wrenches too, too much. Um, maybe, I'll think about it, but I like it how it is now because I like how nice and clean it is. In here are a couple more tools that are pretty neat if you have them, but not that big a deal if you don't. Um, these are just tap and die sets. So this is a pretty cheap gear wrench tap and die set, but it, it's been effective for what I've needed. I'm not a machinist, so I'm not gonna need, you know, a super nice set of tap and dies. And then that's just a snap on one with bigger taps and dies. I don't think you're really interested. Okay, in the bottom drawer, we're almost done. Uh, this is a wire brush, no particular van brand. I think it's a local hardware store. You don't need anything special for that. Um, so these are files. These are super cool to have. Files are always nice to have. This is a, a chisel, which is super cool to, uh, especially with modern castle nuts that don't have pins anymore. You have to like chisel them in, so annoying. Uh, here's another chisel, I believe. Yeah, it's a, this, I think this is a woodworking chisel though. I do not think this is for metal or anything like that. Uh, I was wondering where my good punch was. Oh yeah. This is my favorite punch uh, because it's narrow, but it's super strong and it has a wide striking surface, which is always super, super neat. See that? This is my favorite punch. If I lost this, I'd be very upset. This is a snap-on punch and chisel set. It is part number PC710BK, Burger King. Uh, this is super nice to have. I just bought this, so they're not used at all. Um, but you need one of these if you're going to be an enthusiast and work on cars and deal with metal. This is a heat gun. It's separate from a hairdryer because it gets insanely hot. This is nice for uh, doing heat shrink or anything like that. Super cool. This is a brake line and transmission line removal set, uh, your, or a fuel line removal set too. Uh, not so much brake line, but it's for fuel fuel lines and transmission lines. You need one of these if you're going to work on Fords. Fords love using these for some strange reason for fuel lines. Um, you're going to need one of these. This one's made by Lizile. It's a 39900. I just bought this off Amazon. Super, super cool. And I, I've used it all the time. This is my half inch breaker bar by Snap-on. It is amazing. Uh, if you're going to buy a breaker bar, buy a brand name one, buy something good. Don't buy a Chinese knockoff because 
you're putting on hundreds of foot pounds of torque on this when you're trying to do things. And if that were to break while you're doing it, I, I shudder to think what would happen, uh, but it won't be pretty. So buy a nice one. This is a soldering gun. It's super old school too, it's older than I am. It's made by Weller, which is still in business today. And uh, you hold it and that end gets hot and you can solder in a tight spot. These are cool. Uh, and apparently reliable because it's been in the family for quite some time. This has a, this has a funny story and I know this just kind of looks, and I wouldn't buy, advise buying, buying this one because the hook broke off the top, but this is a Craftsman LED um, work light. Uh, it is part number 73903. Uh, my high school girlfriend bought me this when I turned 16 or 17, I think it was 16. Uh, she was super, super cool. If you're watching, hi, but yeah, she bought me this. I still use it to this day. It's super handy to have and LEDs are great. And I had actually owned a DeLorean at that time. Yeah, Back to the Future car, I had one. Um, look cool looking garbage car. So I was working on it a lot and you know, she wanted to help me. So she bought me this. I thought that was really cool. Um, yeah, work light. Essential to have, you need one, buy one. Then apparently Craftsman cheaps out on the hooks, but the LEDs are good. This is a body grinder. This is for uh, doing body work with like Bondo or something. You don't really need one of these. This is a Bosch death wheel. So you see these on roadkill all the time, or a lot of people use them in metalworking. They're essential for that. You really don't need one if you're casually working on your car. I have one because I have needed one. See how much the wheel's been used? Use it all the time, but they're super dangerous, so I advise wearing some sort of protection. And the crown jewel of my automotive tool collection is this brand new snipe snap-on uh, pry bar. And this is a legitimate pry bar. It is part number SPBS9SA, I think. Anyway, these are essential for everything because when something's stuck, you need big force to move it and you get big force out of a long, out of a long leverage, right? Long enough stick, you can move the world. Same kind of principle. This is essential for anything uh, big, like trying to separate a transmission and an engine, you're gonna need a, a pry bar to kind of pry it loose on both sides and stuff. I've even used them to get transmission cross members out of the subframes on cars, I've used this. So there's a million applications for a nice pry bar. If you don't have one, buy one. And again, I have to advise buy a name brand one. And I'm not just saying that because it's, I love Snap-on. If you love Matco, if you love Cornwell or something, buy one of those. Just get a quality, quality, quality pry bar. I don't wanna think what happens if you buy a cheap Chinese knockoff. So those are just some of the tools I have. If you want me to go even more in depth and show some of the things that I wasn't able to show because they're not actually at this location, they're at the different location, or some of the supplies I have in these cabinets around the shop, or even demonstrate some of the um, shop equipment that I have, let me know down below. And if you have a toolbox and you wanna show it to me, you can tweet it at me. There is a link to the Twitter down below. I would love to see them. I would absolutely love it. Or you can post it on our Facebook. Uh, I'm always on there. You can ask me anything there, um, but I do advise I'm on Twitter quite a bit more. So check out our Twitter. I believe it's at two car pros. Uh, again, there's links down below in the description. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed and that notification bell is rung. I'd appreciate it. And I'll see you next time.